Welcome back to Boiler House Garage and to part 6 of our series that tests for ethanol content in super unleaded fuels. In today's video we're taking a look at SO Supreme Plus 99. This is sort of a revisit as we tested it prior to the E10 mandate in part 1 of this series, but unlike the last time this petrol is labelled 99 octane when previously it was 97. Is this updated brand higher octane because it uses 5% ethanol and like the Supreme 97 which we found to be ethanol free? Let's find out. Hello, Though I didn't record the conversation with her, this young lady noticed that I'm driving an 18 year old car and asked if I knew if it was okay to use E10 in her 2007 Vauxhall Corsa D as the posters next to the pumps quote that cars from 2011 onwards either shouldn't be run or that you should seek further information. Here's the poster in question and similar ones have been distributed by the government like most things they propagate to spread misinformation. To say 2011 is totally subjective as no manufacturer changed any specs or models at a particular cutoff date although I do realise this is just a suggestion to simplify that almost all cars produced or registered after then will be built with components that can withstand alkyl whole blended fuels. It's not entirely accurate as I know several cars sold up to 2016 that would actually be damaged by E10. In the case of this lady's Corsa, I said it was okay as it was built to the same specification as the European models in countries that were using E10 for a long time before us. But if she was still unsure, she should use the super unleaded as it would be worth the extra money as it will do more miles per gallon. Government propaganda also lies about the energy content of ethanol saying it's two thirds of petrol when in reality it's actually one third. She started filling with the E10 and said she's buying an electric car soon, a four year old Renault Zoe. I did warn her about the limited charge cycles on the Leaf and Zoe batteries but sadly too many people are being misled into having high expectations for battery powered cars and I think it's better to let them find out the hard way and let what's left of the free market dictate EV sales prior to this preposterous 2030 car ban. The Vauxhall Opel Z14 XCP engine in her car was used until 2010 and I think its replacement was near identical only with a turbo added and then used for another five years after that. Of course the engines themselves are not the issue with ethanol based fuel but it's the fuel system itself. With modern Vauxhalls the only cars they sold over the past 20 years that should not be run on E10 are those with the 2.2 direct injection engine. Again not because of the engine but the high pressure fuel pumps used in these models were notoriously fragile and problematic and the already weak rubber diaphragms will not last long being washed in ethanol. Vauxhall Opel even had direct injection on a six cylinder uh, Camin head engine used in the 70s. It's nice that they attempted to be innovative, however this was sometimes at the cost of reliability. Now back to testing this petrol. I'm pouring 300 milliliters of water through 700 milliliters of petrol, which is a testing method I explained in part three of this series and demonstrated how ethanol appears in part five, the last video's control tests. As mentioned in part five, there is a small discrepancy in the lines on the tubes as it appears to be a tiny amount over the 300 mil uh, line on the printed side, but an equally fractional amount below it on the other. At first glance, SO Supreme does appear to be completely ethanol free, but we'll come back to it in an hour's time just to let everything settle after this. Today's video is brought to you by Crypto.com and their fantastic range of cashback generating steel Visa debit cards. With fuel prices as they are today, oh my God! Imagine receiving 2, 3 or even 5% cash back on not only your fuel purchases but anything you pay for using the card with absolutely no fees hidden or otherwise and even paying 100% of your Spotify and Netflix subscriptions. Here is my personal Ruby Red Visa card that pays me 2% cash back for only a £300 stake in Crypto.com's native Crow coin that today is worth £975. What's more is if you click the link in the description below you will receive $25 for free when you install the Crypto.com app and sign up to receive your card. Please feel free to comment if you need any further information on this offer or the Crypto.com app itself. Now back to the video. 
So back an hour later, and as suspected, there's been no change to the level line. Also, we don't have that thicker separation that we've previously seen with ethanol blends. I'm glad to see this as SO have been the only supplier to give a clear answer to classic car and bike clubs when asked which of their petrols were actually ethanol free. The difference today is that they say only the supreme fuel in the south of England and Wales except Devon and Cornwall is ethanol free, when previously it was only Devon, Cornwall, Tyneside and parts of North Wales. Perhaps this is down to changes in their distribution network rather than the E10 mandate itself but I'm speculating here. I would love to hear from anyone who actually works for a fuel refinery or one of the fuel companies if you do have anything to add to this. Don't forget to subscribe as part 7 will be a test of Texaco Supreme 97. I believe like Esso they had a rebrand to a 99 octane Supra unleaded. However the two Texacos local to me are still selling the 97 uh, which is the one I'll be testing in the next video. I will also be testing SO and Shell Fuel again in the new year to see if the December cutoff date for selling E5 Premium, Premium in the UK is standard unleaded confusingly, uh, makes a difference to their Super and, and Supreme unleaded's uh, and if they're still remaining free of ethanol. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, hey baby. <laughs>